aha moment where, oh my gosh, this is real, right? Mm -hmm. For other people, it's kind of more of a slow, gradual realization. And I think for me, I was probably in the second category, more of a slow, gradual realization that this isn't, you know, a cover for something else. This is really about, about UFOs. About so how do you first get introduced to these things? Well, it, so it was a, I didn't get introduced to these things. It was first of all I was introduced to the reporting, right? right. So there was these these official reports that we were getting from the field. There's official videos and and whatnot um, that describe vehicles doing things, maneuvering in ways that frankly outperform anything we have in our inventory. Now, keep in mind my background was at some point in aerospace, so I I knew all the capabilities of an F-16 or, for example, a an F-22 or the F-35. Um, and at the end of the day, as advanced as they are, they're, they're still conventional aircraft. You know, they still have the old um, – there's, a, there's a, a, an adage they use for jet engines. Uh, it, <laughs> it, may, it may seem a little uh, awkward here, but uh, it's uh, suck, squeeze, bang, and blow. Uh, that's what a jet engine does. Forgive yeah. me. That's what it does. Right. You know? and yeah. So uh, it's a convention, a conventional type engine. Of course, you have a propeller, too, that can, can displace air and whatnot. These vehicles were different. These vehicles, for the most part, didn't have any type of associated characteristic that you or I or any normal person would associate with with a plane, with an airplane, an aircraft, right? That, but and yet it's flying. So, how does an airplane work? Well, let's say this cigar, for example, is is an airplane, uh, and there's four fundamental forces. And so you have thrust, lift, drag, and weight. And if you understand those, you can create, you can build wings, and you create lift, and you can fly. And then you have to have an engine for that thrust and whatnot. The things that our, our military pilots were encountering um, didn't have that. They didn't have wings. They didn't have rudders and ailerons and control surfaces. They didn't have cockpits. They, they didn't have engines, no obvious signs of propulsion. They were, they were doing things and maneuvering in ways that, frankly, defied anything that, that we had in our inventory. And we were pretty certain the enemies didn't have either. Our adversary didn't have these technologies either. And even more perplexing is that they were being encountered over controlled U.S. airspace and over sensitive military installations. So, you know, from, from that perspective, you've got, a real, you've got a real national security concern on your hands. So you said video. Mm -hmm. What was the, do you remember the first thing that you saw? Um, boy, there's so many. You know, I think part of the, the challenge is that most people here in this country, they're familiar with the three videos, right, uh, that have been famously released by the Pentagon. The Go Fast. Go the Fast, Fleur. Gimbal, Fleer, correct. Right. But those are, those are the least compelling of all the videos that the government has. Those were unclassified. And so those were the ones, those were kind of the low-hanging fruit that could be released to the general public. There's stuff out there that's like 4K ultra-high definition, right? So when you see something like that from a, a certain military platform or a certain military equity or an intelligence collection platform, um, you have to look at that and say, well, what, what is that? What the hell is that? And more importantly, that data is being backed up by radar data. Right? So you've got, you've got electro-optical data like gun camera footage or pod or FLIR, FLIR video, and then you've got radar data that's, that's, that is actually confirming what the video is picking up. And then you've got eyewitnesses that are also watching it. Right, So you've got trained, trained observers, pilots that, that can recognize the silhouette between an Su-22 and a MiG-25 from 20 miles away and make a split-second decision, is it friend or foe, do I kill it or is it, do I let it live? And they're reporting it. So you have now, you know, three separate, if you will, collection platforms, the, the human eye being one of them. You've got gun camera footage and you've got radar footage all describing the same event at the same place at the same time under the same circumstances. Right. And so keep in mind with my background as a f former special agent in counterintelligence, if this was in front of a jury, you know, I. As I've said before, I, th I think we're well beyond reasonable doubt. That's that is something there. I mean, that is real. That's not an atmospheric aberration. It's not a uh, you know anomaly. That is that is something there. It's tangible. So, was there an aha moment for you 